Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome. My name is Random Gamer Ribbon and I am the editor of Randomized Gaming and I welcome you to Randomized Gaming's 8th installment of our Now Playing series. This is our video series where we here at the Randomized Gaming team talk about and chat about and review a few games we're currently playing. And this time around I am going to be looking at Clockwork Aquario, which is an unreleased 1994 arcade game that started development way back in 1991. Yes, it has literally taken 30 years for us to see this game get a commercial release. It was originally started by Weststone Bit Entertainment and Sega. Weststone Bit Entertainment are of course best remembered as the developers of the Wonder Boys series. And I also think this game may have an accolade of being possibly one of, if not the longest game to go from development to actually being published at retail, but I'm not entirely sure if there may have been a game that's been slightly longer. But yeah, this definitely beats Duke Nukem Forever by quite some margin. Now, just before I go any further into this video, as always, I need to declare that I have been provided a copy for free in order to look at it and preview and review it by PR Hound, a company who are working with In-In Games. This review will be looking at the digital release by In-In Games, but there is also a physical version being done by Strictly Limited Games as well. However, as of the time of recording this video, Strictly Limited Games have already run out of stock of the single standalone release, which is rather annoying. They only have the expensive collector and limited editions left for the PS4 and Nintendo Switch. And I'm actually going to say, I think Strictly or In In Games, who are both part of the same parent company, United Games Entertainment, should look at printing a lot more standard edition copies of Clockwork Aquario. Probably actually at major retail, I'd say, because I think this is going to be a big popular seller in the long run so yeah it's a bit disappointing it's not easy to get hold of a retail copy and I really would like to purchase one as well but I don't really want all the sort of bonus stuff you get with the extra and collectors type edition because often I don't feel they're worth the money if I'm being honest but if you do want to grab the digital only version then it's out now on PlayStation Switch in Europe already. It doesn't release in North America until the 14th of December. But in the UK it's available here at 15 99 Now as I mentioned Clockwork Aqua Rio is a long lost Weststone Bit Entertainment game. It was originally planned to be released in, I think, 94. I think there was an arcade test, supposedly in 93. By all accounts, it had quite a protracted and delayed development. So they started work in 91, and they took, for an arcade game, two years is an incredibly, or two to three years, an incredibly slow development. The fact they didn't get it, they got cancelled in 94, although the arcade test was in 93, and I think they said it didn't do that well. And I believe the version of the game they've released is based on that arcade board because I know the main guy behind it at West End Bit Entertainment was, and I'm going to probably pronounce his name wrong, but he is the main Wonder Boy creator, Ryuichi Nishizawa. And he's basically been the, the sort of main artist guy behind the Wonder Boy series and behind West Stone. And he now works in conjunction with Lack Corporation, who helped do this release. And yeah, it, it really is a really interesting arcade game. It is a 2D platformer, and I can kind of see why it didn't make the cut at the time, because it was using the Sega System 18 board, which would technically have been quite out of date hardware in 1994, as Model 2 was out at this point. Yeah, it was quite behind the curve, and I think Sega System 32 was also out as well. Clockwork Aqua Rio is a, a really nice little platformer. It it reminds me a bit of Wonder Boy 3 Monsters Lair, but it's a huge gameplay improvement. Clearly, the developers realised, because Monsters Lair is not a particularly good game. Monsters Lair, to me, is by far the worst game in the Wonder Boy series. However, one look at Clockwork Aqua Rio, and you can clearly see the similarities between it and the Wonder Boys franchise. Notably, as with Monsters Lair in the arcade, the main male hero had green hair and the female hero had pink hair, which is a subtle little touch. In fact, this may even be considered part of the Wonder Boy series, I don't know. 
but it's a platformer. It's a very unique platformer. It's sort of a cross between Rainbow Island and Parasaur Stars mixed in with a bit of what would be Super Mario Brothers 2 or Super Mario Brothers the USA. That's the one that was the reskin of the Japanese game that I can't remember off the top of my head what it was called. So it's a platformer and the aim is to get to the end of each stage and beat the boss. You do have a time limit that's ticking away so you are encouraged to keep moving and as you progress through the level the time limit resets as well. But the aim is literally jump on enemies, you stun them and then you can pick them up and throw them at other enemies to take them out. The enemies drop gems as well and if you collect enough of them you get health power ups. There's also the stage stages are littered with bonus pickups and balloons that if you jump on will pop and if you pop enemies in conjunction with balloons you can also rack up huge scores. There's also a bonus for popping balloons without holding down the jump button to do the increased jump. So as in most games if you jump on an enemy hold it down you'll do a higher bounce but if you can do a short bounce without holding down the jump you get an additional score on the balloons. And you can really start once you start getting the mechanics down really start triggering high combos defeating enemies in large groups in conjunction with popping balloons with big score bonuses and that's something that's quite a nice mechanic. There are three playable characters they are Huck Londo who's the sort of general character, Ellie Moon who is the weakest character in terms of size and physical stature but she has the best jump and there's also the robot Goosh who is the biggest character so that means he's a bit more vulnerable to enemies but he has by far the strongest punch as well. In fact, that enables you to make some of the bosses really, really easy because he's got such a big attack area. Although on the downside, he does have the weakest jump and his jump also automatically moves forward. So you have to counterbalance a bit. He doesn't stand still. So he is the weakest jump by far. Ellie has the strongest and Huck is somewhere in the middle. He's basically got slightly weaker jump but he's got better attack than Ellie, weaker than Goosh. So once you get used to the characters, they do play slightly differently, which is really nice. Although I have actually now finished it with all three and I managed to one credit clear it with everyone apart from Goosh at the minute. Although I'll probably have it done by the time this video goes up with Goosh. But yeah, I can one credit clear it. It's a very, very well balanced game. The game is not the largest, it takes place over five different stages, but each stage has a very different theme and feel. On top of that, each stage has a mini boss and there's also a main boss at the end of each stage as well. So unlike most platformers, your character can actually take two hits. You have your initial starts and when you take a damage, your characters are beaten up stage. If you take another hit, you lose a life. However, there is also a magic potion you can drink to restore your health if you have taken damage and they appear in preset locations as you progress through each level. There's also a slightly random star power up. I think there might be criteria for getting it to appear, but definitely there's a delay for when it appears. And basically what it is, that's a super power up that makes you invulnerable for around 10 seconds. You also can shoot stars with it. And if you're able to get it to drop at the boss, although it is random, you can absolutely hammer the bosses when it does drop. But yeah, if people are going to speed run this, do be aware that it's slightly random. So you may or may not get it. And that does affect the speed run times of any place. You certainly can make, you can, I know myself, I've had a few boss runs where they can be a little bit tricky and then you get the power up and then wham, it's all done in a second. Each of the bosses does vary a bit. The first boss is quite easy, but they rapidly bump up difficulty. The second boss was actually very tricky. The third boss is really easy with Goosh because of his larger hit attack, but it's quite tricky. In fact, possibly the trickiest boss in the game with Ellie and Huck. Fourth boss is about the same with everyone. And then, of course, there's the final boss as well. That's good fun, although the final boss does have multiple stages. Each of the stages also have a very different visual look as well. The first stage has a clockwork metallical feel to it. The second stage feels like you're in a, a sky castle with sort of rainbows everywhere. The third one is really nice in a sort of like lake watery area. The fourth one actually sees you riding a submarine and you're sort of sailing along. And finally, the stage has you, it was almost very akin to Rainbow Island. The stage literally has you in another clockwork elevator sort of style or escalator st style stage, I should say. And basically the water is constantly rising like Rainbow Island. So there's definitely some inspiration from Rainbow Island and Powerful Stars. And notice again the way the enemies look stunned and turn blue and when you're sort of holding them and things. Definitely very similar in how they look to Powerful Stars. So definitely, it was definitely inspired by the Taito games around the same period. 
It reminds me a bit of Liquid Kid as well, although I wouldn't necessarily say it draws that many gameplay items from Liquid Kid. But it does feel like that gameplay and style was what West Ham were aimed for. This is quite a deviation away from the other games, from the, their Wonder Boy series, in terms of platforming action. This is much, much tighter gameplay, much more constructed as well. Feels much more like a platformer as well. Wonder Boy, the original Wonder Boy felt more like a running game because you were constantly against the health limit and the way you could move left to right, whereas here you can move back and forward on each stage, so it's a bit more forgiving and you also go up and down as well. To make things a little easier, you can also earn extra lives either by collecting the crystal that matches your character or by obtaining certain scores. And once you've beaten the game, you can also adjust the dip switches via the arcade menu. Initially, there are three modes that are literally... Um, it's a bit disappointing, actually, the, the content in the game. You basically get... There's basically an arcade mode you can unlock that allows you to insert credits and access the dip switches. There are three other modes that are called easy, normal and hard and all they literally are is the same game just with limited numbers of credits and they seem a little bit pointless. Emulation wise, once again this has been done by Rattalika Games and Steve Snake. I think this does seem a bit like it might be running using MAME but I'm not entirely sure. It's certainly some one of the sort of emulators. The emulation did seem very very good however, although I can't, as I've never played the arcade board, I can't say if there were any issues with it seeing as the arcade board has never been publicly released. But yes, it is a very nice game. As said, you do get some extra unlockable artwork and there's credits as well. And you can also nicely listen to the audio in the sound test as well. There's an in-game sound test. And there's also a remixed sound test version you can listen to of all the music in-game. However, for some reason, you can't have that playing in-game, the remixed version. You can only listen to it by the sound test menu, which seems a bit of an oversight and rather odd. You would have thought you'd been able to swap out the original soundtrack for the remix one and vice versa. But that's not currently an option in the game. Maybe that will be patched in. I don't know. Disappointingly, though, I would have liked a practice mode to actually pick any stage or any boss to play on. Definitely getting down some of the bosses, it would be nice if you could have practiced on them, but that's not a mode that's in-game. There is the ability to play as the mini-game, so I should state that the two-player mode does differentiate slightly from the single-player in a few ways. Two-player mode allows for some slight competitive play as you can pick up and throw one another, which is quite nice, you can use that to attack. You can also jump on top of one another and steal each other's crystals, although if you jump on top of one another, it does slightly stun the other player for a few seconds, and you can inadvertently throw each other to the death or stun players so that they then get hit by enemies, so you can be a bit cheeky. This is a sort of a competitive, cooperative game in two-player mode. However, in two-player mode, after you finish every stage, there is a really nice bonus stage that they actually had to finish for this one. Supposedly, I think they said it was originally unfinished, but they've actually finished it. And there's actually, if you see in the gallery, there's pictures of the sort of corrupted bonus stage. Apparently, they said that was one part of the game that when they checked the ROM was corrupted and they had to fix it. But it's a really nice two-player mini game where you basically have to pop the other player's balloons before they pop yours. Although what I will say, it's incredibly unbalanced. The player who has Gush has a huge advantage over all the others because his sheer size allows him to block the balls and he can also effectively get higher and throw higher because of his size as well. So yeah, it's quite interesting. Gush has a major advantage in the two-player mode, so be warned if you're playing against Gush, he would be the S-tier character. Visually, this is by far the best looking Sega System 18 game I think I've ever seen. And I don't think there's going to ever be a better one. There are some really lovely, bright, bold, beautiful sprites that look stunning. And they're huge as well. Certainly the boss's sprites are massive. Really lovely artwork. This, this beats all the other games that I've seen. I mean, the games like Alien Storm use this hardware. This looks miles better than Alien Storm. Really does look good. And it's a real shame we didn't get to see this art back in 94. But I could see why it was cancelled at the time because this would have got, gone up against games like Aliens vs Predator from Capcom and X-Men Children of the Atom. Certainly CPS2 was out at this point. To be honest, those games look better than this. If I'm putting my 94 hat on and looking at the games that came out in 94 and this, unfortunately they looked better. So I can understand why Sega and West Dome Entertainment cancelled this but it's a shame. It's, it is a really, really good game. 
although it is very short it only takes about 20 minutes to play through and I kind of wish there was an extra stage or two to make it around 30 minutes in length I think they could have probably done with two additional stages just to make the game around 30 minutes I think that would have been a good idea it would have been nice if you could have picked your starting stages as well I think that would have been another mechanic that would have been quite nice that you could have picked a few stages or maybe you've done stage one then you could pick out of stage two three and four which you wanted to do before you went on to stage five yeah it would be nice if they'd been if they'd add in two additional stages that would made stage seven the last one then you could have two three four five and six but it is what it is it is still a very good game apparently there were a lot of changes in the game and there does appear to be some slightly odd elements that appear to be missing so notably puck's animation on the character select screen he appears to be brandishing some sort of weapon that isn't in game and they did say this had a very protracted development where they did chop and change a lot of elements so I suspect earlier versions may have played quite differently to this and it would have been interesting to see then because that's almost if you major changes to a game and then you effectively totally change how the game played the original game may have been a very different game in terms of how it played interestingly there's a remnant of the original name it was going to be called Ghost Hunter originally it's obvious why they changed the name although whether they originally they had ghosts in the game I don't know they may have been they may have changed the whole theme and elements of the game originally you can still see that on the background of the scoreboard screen when it crops up it still says ghost hunter in the background but yeah there's no ghosts in this as far as i can tell definitely they wanted the name change that's for sure and the aquatic name suits it much better seeing as you're under the water and there's a lot of aqua themed enemies in this Another really nice little touch is the opening intro animation where especially when you see him, the main villain doctor, so Hangyo walk over and kick the sand castle. It's really funny. And yeah, it gives you the just the animation is just lovely. It also makes him out to be a sort of menacing, mean spirited little villain and it's it's good fun. The character he does remind me a bit of Doctor Robotnik by the fact every he's in every machine and you beat him and then you see him run off and go to the next one it is overall a very very good game said so i have one credit cleared it now it has been a really good experience playing it as well i have really enjoyed it and i'm going to highly recommend this is it very very good i might actually try and grab a retail copy as well i really do want to get a retail copy i have really really enjoyed this the only other drawback at the minute currently as of as of yesterday the trophies still weren't up so that's a little bit so i don't know if they're going to patch it as well i do think they could definitely do with adding in the remix ost into the main game so you could actually select it and it would be nice if they did some sort of practice mode where you could pick one of the bosses to play against once you fought them as it is the modes on offer a bit lackluster and you might as well just get given you the arcade mode from the get-go but yes, in terms of being an arcade gamer from the 90s and 80s, although I was sort of late 80s, this really does take me back. It feels a game made of the time. It's so worldly crafted. You just don't quite see as many games even made quite to the standard because the arcade industry was, because they were so expensive, they had to basically really fine tune those arcade games so people would play them, actually walk into an arcade and put their money into it. Yeah, this really is a wellly crafted game. I have really enjoyed it. It is a real blast to the past as well. It does feel like it's from the early 90s. Ironically, it does feel like it was made, it should have been released in about 92, if I'm being honest. It has that type of platformy gameplay from the sort of 91, 92 era. I think had it been released in 92, I think they would have probably, it would have done very well. It's a shame. It also feels like it could have done with the Mega Drive or Sega Saturn port. And again, it didn't get that either. So, but it is a very, very good game. And I really am glad it's been finally gotten a release thanks to in in games and strictly limited said united games entertainment who are the parent company it is very very good and i highly recommend it i just wish this release had a bit more content to it It does feel a bit bare bones and i feel because this was such an important release i think it should have been a slightly a more meatier package than what it is Another downside of this release, and this is a note for in, -in games and Ratalika games, is that this has got the emulation bug that I think the Grey Lancer had, where if you double tap to go back to the PlayStation Dash via the PlayStation button and then go back to game, the music will be sped up. Now, annoyingly, they have actually fixed this in some of their other releases, but they haven't fixed it for this one, so that's bad. This should have been patched across the board by now. They should be using the latest version of this emulation engine, but that's an issue. The other thing I will note, I have noted that Grey Grey Lancer and Grenor, which I've also been going to be looking at, that actually has some slight control lag, and I suspect that control lag's probably present in this. It's just very hard to detect. But that's definitely another issue. Something I think Ratalika games need to improve with their emulation in some respects. 
but as an old QA staff member myself, it's annoying and somewhat disappointing and uh, slightly amateurish to see bugs that have been fixed in some of their previous releases are back in this one as well. So that is something rather like the games and in need to get sorted pretty sharpish. It was going to be originally published by Sega as well, and it definitely feels like it's had Sega's hallmarks and tweakings on it as well. So it feels like a West End bit entertainment slash Sega game and how it plays and looks. It really is a, just a wonderful experience. And I highly recommend it. If you like this type of game, as long as you don't mind the fact that it's a very short game. It took me a few attempts to one credit clear it. I spent a couple of hours, three, four hours to get the one credit clear down. But playing wise, it is very, I mean, it only takes 20 minutes to finish very quickly and I said there's the easy mode which gives you nine credits from the get-go but you can once you get the arcade mode unlocked you can play around with the dip switches and you can adjust the number of lives there's the difficulty in the turn on and off the attract sound as well is a really really good game it comes highly recommended from me here at randomized gaming thank you for watching this randomized gaming video ladies and gentlemen my name is random gamer Riven, the editor of randomized gaming and if you enjoyed this randomized gaming video, can I kindly ask you hit the like button? And if you enjoy our content and want regular weekly videos, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Also, if you have any questions or comments related to this video, please do leave a comment below in the description and myself or one of the team will try and get back to you at some point. And if you want to watch something else, we have a huge array of videos and playlists already on the channel. So do check us out and do look at our content as the channel is packed full of playthrough videos, long play videos, gameplay videos of both obscure and well-known games, retro and modern consoles. We have tech analysis videos made up of gaming comparisons between different versions and we also do comparisons on 5060Hz issues between PAL and NTSC. We have some consumer issues that may affect you as a gamer as well. We have reviews and so much more on the channel. So if you like our content, please do consider sticking around and looking at our channel. And I also do regular streams as well, so I hope to see you drop by on one of them as well. So all that leaves me to do is thank you, the viewer, for watching this video. And I wish you a good night, a good evening, a good afternoon, or a good morning, wherever you are in the world watching this video. And I hope to see you on the next one.